to Ron Jones. Ron, police aren't always very quick to release the body cam video, but in this case, Henry County is giving us an edited view from three officers' cameras. Yeah, and this is incredible video that you're about to see. It is heart pounding, Aisha. Keep in mind, folks, all the officers knew when they got to the house was someone had called 911 and said a woman was bleeding inside the garage. Now, when police knocked on the front door, no one answered. So their body cameras pick it up from there, and we want to warn you, folks, you will see two officers being shot in the video, but we need to emphasize both of them survived. They're going to be okay, but you will not see any of those victims who were killed. Two thirty-two radio. Blood in the driveway. Females visible inside. Unresponsive. We're about to force entry. You ready, Foster? That's the voice of Henry County Officer Taylor Webb telling dispatchers he's going to kick in the front door. Little does he know he's about to be met with gunfire. Door. Webb is hit in the chest and hip. His body cam falls off as he runs for cover. Shots fired, shots fired. Officer Keegan Merritt makes a dash for the house as another unidentified officer takes his position near the front door. He's fired on too. Watch out. The armed suspect, Anthony Tony Bailey Jr., taunts the officers from inside, warning them not to come in. Don't come in. I got a lost shot. Third shot. I got a hostage. As Officer Merritt takes cover behind a tree, investigators say Bailey opens fire on him, striking him in the head. Ah! Now we should point out after Officer Webb was injured inside that house, he took cover inside the garage, but he was not able to open up the garage door to escape himself. So later this afternoon, police actually released that body cam video showing how his fellow officers rescued him. Pull the arm, pull the arm, pull the chain, where? Pull the chain. Go, come on, come on, where? That's amazing. You saw Officer Webb dive out of there. One thing we should point out here, uh, guys, and that is Officer Webb took a, a gunshot wound or took a gunfire to the chest. However, because he was wearing a vest, he didn't bleed out in that garage. He was actually able to survive. So this standoff lasts 15 hours. I think a question that a lot of people have had on social media that have contacted us has been a, a simplistic view of this in that why didn't they go in earlier? Well, you know, you got to keep in mind that once you get to the scene and you're more focused on making sure that you can make contact with a suspect inside. So they had negotiators there at the time and uh, during that time they're trying to create a peaceful resolution. They knew the 16 year old boy was in the house, but they didn't know if he was OK. So negotiators, they tried to talk to the gunman and they spoke with him for hours. The police chief says that it started off very positive. The gunman said that he would release the boy, but they never ever heard from that teenager. And the chief also says that at some point the gunman got angry, stopped communicating with the officers all together. And that's when police fired tear gas to get him to surrender. Once again, he began shooting at those officers. The officers, of course, they're going to return fire. And then once they got inside, that's when they found the suspect's body. They found the teenager. They found the pregnant mom and the unborn baby. You really have a sense that law enforcement will be using this for many years to come mm -hmm. as far as teaching officers about these kinds of events yeah. that are, are, are ever spiraling out of control. And that's what they actually do. They take the body cam video and during training, during academies, they will play the video so that they can learn how to be more safe in a similar situation so that they don't get injured themselves. Ron Jones, thank you. We appreciate it.